Okay, welcome back to <laughs> Thunder Game Let's Play. Uh, gone Home, I'm Alonara, and we're about to go through a secret passage. It looks like, yes indeed, now that we know it's here, we can open it up. Oh my gosh, I don't think there's going to be a light in here. Game is about to get creepy. What is this? All old magazine advertisement clippings. Okay, there's a light. Uh, note. Ghost Hunters, Sam and Lonnie, Secret House Investigation Log. Hidden compartments found three. Okay, so there's three different compartments. The library, upstairs hall, and foyer. Evidence of the supernatural discovered zero. Alright, so now we have all the hidden compartments marked on our map right here, right here. Interesting. Looks like. Okay, this comes out in the library. Okay. Wow. You can hardly even tell that's there. That is crazy. Okay. So we'll go to the other two places. One of them was out here, right? One of them right here. No? Is it here? Wait, so if we're in this hallway, here's the foyer, here's the Dad's office. It's Dad's office, so it should be somewhere. Oh wait, it was there? Yeah, we go. Okay, two items in here. Private, do not read. Read story. <laughs> Take second combo scrap. Oh, okay. Sam, Private 51. Okay, so this is part of the combo for the uh, locker in her room. Private, do not read the Green Glacier Part 2. Of course we're going to read it. Allegra and her scouting party, party peered down warily through the dense canopy of rustling leaves from their perch high in the forest's branches. Mere feet away, sunlight shone brightly off the inner ice walls of the glacial basin in which the forest grew. It was a strange sight indeed, such lushness juxtaposed with the frigid ice formations. Allegra leapt forward without hesitation, bounding through the high branches. The first mate had been captured by the Green Glacier's Amazonian tribe. His life hung in the balance. So the first mate is a he at this point, but it... It was a she in that other story. We have to hurry, Allegra's party followed behind, moving quietly as a breeze through the greenery. Allegra landed in the clearing and shouted, Stop! She saw the Queen Amazonian up on her pedestal, reaching for the lever that would drop her first mate into the vat below. She shouted, No! and flung her saber at the Amazon's reaching hand, but it was too late. The first mate screamed as he fell toward the water, then splashed down and all was eerily silent. Allegra looked on, frozen in fear and remorse. She had been a moment too late. But then, from the vat, something began to emerge. A head of dark brown hair, just like the first mate's. Then the shoulders and sleeves of his coat, soaking wet. But as the figure stood and the water poured down, Allegra saw that the first mate had changed. He was lo no longer a man at all. In fact, what, what looked back at her were the eyes, the face the hair and hands and body of a woman, still in the first mate's clothes. Interesting. Still the first mate, he, she, spoke in a soft, clear voice. Captain? The Amazonian queen said, she is one of us now, she is ours. Allegra drew her magical flintlock pistols from her belt, and the crew readied their swords. Allegra glared into the queen's eyes and said, that's the love of my life, and you can't have her. So I think this is obviously, well, yeah, it's, it is obviously a metaphorical type of story for uh, Sam's realization that she likes women. 
Alright, and the other secret passage is in Dad's office back there. Okay, we am going to backtrack a little. That might have his combination in there, or part of it. It's in here. This is where it is. Yeah, it should be. Maybe. Somewhere around here. Oh, right there. Anything in there, though? Is that... that that's not what I'm looking for, right? Yeah, those, those are already... those are already there. Hmm. Maybe it's a bottle. Irish whiskey. Hmm. Not sure that's a good thing that's hidden up there. Is it, is it the bookcase? Secret bookcase passage? Those are always fun. Maybe it's on the other side of the wall, too. Check there. Kinda looks like these bookcases might come apart, but hmm. Let's check over here. Oh, there's a loose panel, yeah. Okay. Show flyer for the misfits. Another diary. At Todd's brother's place after the show, there was only a futon to sleep on, so Lonnie and I shared it. The lights went out. I was turned toward her. My eyes started to adjust, and then I could see she was looking at me, too. In the dark, she smiled. My heart was beating so fast. I rolled over. I felt so, I don't know, nervous? After a minute, she put her arm around me, and was so close, and whispered in my ear, I really like you. Aww. I just nodded my head, and I really hope she could tell. I really hope that she meant what I think she did. I felt like a shook-up can of soda ever since. <laughs> I hope we have the chance to talk before I explode. So cute, she got a little crush. Oh, <laughs> that's adorable. So I just noticed these numbers here, zero, four, five, one. I think I'm gonna try that as the combination up here. Zero, four, five, one. Zero, four, five. One. Yep. Okay. Uh, read document. Dear Mr. Mason, please find and close your original document and a typed copy for your records. The notarized copy has been filed Excuse me, at our offices. Thank you for entrusting our firm with this important matter. Will and testament. Oh, okay, so this is Osc Uncle Oscar's will. I, Oscar Mason, possessing full competence of mind and memory. <laughs> And after full survey of valued items to my name, do hereby declare this document my last will and testament. The following shall hold true upon my passing. 1. I declare that I am a lifelong resident of Boone County, and that I am unmarried and have no children. I declare that I have no outstanding debts to my name, to any creditors living or dead. I do hereby bequeath every item of value of which I die my of which I may die possessed, including the dwelling and surrounding acres located at Arbor Hill, as well as any and all personal property and moneyed accounts, to my nephew Terrence Greenbrier, Jr. of Ellis County. In the event that said Terrence L. Greenbrier, Jr. should predecease me, then, and in such event, the bequest of him to him shall fall, and the same is bequeathed to his children, as ordered by age and competence as stewards of the estate. Uh, he signed the will, will and testament. Looks like this is a handwritten uh, copy of the same. Uh, is that all we? That's all we get out of 
Okay. That's actually rather disappointing. I was ex hoping for something more. Might come important later, I suppose. Is there anything else about that document? That, that's Kublik and Wise Attorneys. Signed it. Oh, testament. Okay. Oops. So, where to go from here? I guess we have the, uh, um, the attic to go into. Might as well go into the creepy attic. What, what, you know, what, what harm could it do? <laughs> All right. What's this? Can we do anything with that? No. Look like a vent. Okay. Open attic. The attic is locked. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna have to be digging a little harder here to find it. clues. Hmm. What did we get? out of the see if there's anything underneath places. I feel like the room or the the um key to the attic might be in Sam's locker. Cause it is her dark room. Let's see. Get into her backpack at all? No. Was there. So we only found half of her combination. I'm not sure, did it? Okay, yeah, I was gonna say I better kept that. So 51. Write three times, stop at, okay, so 50 and 1 are the second two numbers. Don't know what the first number is. Oh, it's not a combination dial, it's just, that's interesting, I thought it would be a combination lock. Hmm. Although this, so, wait, do I have, like, her locker combination, or? Do I have 50-1? Second half of the combo for Sam's locker. Second half, okay. So, there's the first half somewhere. <laughs> uh, hmm. I wonder if there are more secret areas that I could... Fine, I don't know. Anything else in here that I missed? No, just a magazine. Stumped right now, which is kind of disappointing so early on in the game. A bit stumped. So let me see, is there any way? So five. Zero dash one. What if it's. And there's no dash, it's just. What we could do is try all the numbers here, starting with zero. Oh. Well, that was disappointingly simple, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, so zero, five, zero, one, and we're in. Uh, 
Oh, oh, shirt with the... Two shirts with the store tags still on them. She's shoplifting. Cigarettes. Oh, dear. What a rebel. Yeah, it's pretty standard. Gosh, Sam. <laughs> yeah, well, can you blame her? I mean... What else has she got in there? So really nothing... Nothing that great in here, though. And no key to the... Oh, wait. Yep. Take key. Add a key, probably. Oh, basement Lonnie key. came over today. But everything was... different. She was sitting at my desk chair, and she wouldn't look at me. Finally, I asked her what was going on. She said she felt like she'd done something wrong that night in the city. Like I must think... But I said no. There was nothing wrong. I just wanted to say... But I couldn't find the words. It felt like I was gonna cry, but I wasn't sad. She got up and sat next to me on the bed. I looked at her. Lonnie... Do you think... you... could ever... And that's when she kissed me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Okay, so Lonnie kissed her. Lonnie likes her. That's good. Right. So we have the basement key now. So that that was this door right over here, yeah. Let's go to the basement. There was nothing wrong, added to backpack. Okay. Jeez, there better not be like people or animals tied up down here in the basement. Was it did I look at this one yet? Oh yeah, whatever you found in the attic. Oh I bet there's pictures of like her and uh Lonnie up there. Basement. Hmm. Is there another light switch anywhere? Yeah. Do not want to be down in the basement in the dark. <laughs> okay, three ring binder. Not, uh, not much. A note. Dear Samantha, I would like to cordially thank you for having one to your for having me to your abode for the Thanksgiving holiday with your f lovely family. I enjoyed the f flavorful potatoes and also, oop, also it was weird being around your parents for that long, but it was pretty funny how impossible it is for your dad not to be awkward for more than 30 seconds at a time. <laughs> Very cordially yours, your close friend and confident, Lonnie D. A fancy man, quite. Okay, that's another note. Dear Miss DeSato, allow me to take this opportunity to thank you and guide for being such a gracious host of the festivities at your father's estate, following the aforementioned meal with my parents. Your family's Thanksgiving feast was the more enjoyable of the two events, I must say. I especially appreciated the time I spent with your grandmother, who is a lovely woman with a sterling, with sterling taste and a refined air. Let's do it again sometime next year shall we? <laughs> okay. Writing notes to each other. Chips. A bag of chips that are probably fairly old. Ugh, don't want those. And a little... Aww. Samantha and Lonnie. How cute. Oh. It's different now. I mean, we still hang out all the time like before. But now when no one else is around, well, you know, so you could say we're dating, but it's secret. Secret dating? I don't know. I mean, I guess that's the real difference. Now when we get off the phone or go home for the night, or it's just quiet and we're alone, we say I love you. Oh, that's very cute. A plaque. Here's one for my name. Kind, amazing, intelligent, talented, lighthearted, important, and nice. Oh boy, can you 
make up enough crap about yourself. <laughs> okay, an old sex ed assignment. Oh, this is, is this the same? Oh, this is mine. Okay. Look how scientific mine is. <laughs> a menstrual cycle, an ovum starts to develop. While it's developing, the line of, lining of the uterus is thick and soft, releases. Ugh, yeah, this is... This is boring. Oh, I see. She she wrote... All these phrases appear in Sam's story, but she has a, a whole story around it, and... Oh man, that's pretty funny. Yeah. It's weird though that they'd get the same assignment at two different high schools. Like the same the same assignment paper even. Or maybe that was from Sam's old high school that we both went to. Oh boy, okay, so there's a furnace. It reminds me of the furnace from Home Alone that he's so afraid of and he's <laughs> it's only my imagination. It's only my imagination. <laughs> 90s kids, woo! I yeah, saw Home Alone. Pulp Fiction. I didn't see that in the 90s though, I saw that no, not too long ago actually. It was, it was like, it's like five or six years ago that I first saw Pulp Fiction. Uh, let's see, Reed College. Dear Samantha, congratulations! I am pleased to inform you of your admission to creative writing track of the Reed College Summer Program for Young Scholars for its 1995 session. We believe you have much to contribute to the Reed College community. Based on your portfolio and academic record, I am also pleased to offer you financial aid to cover 75% of the summer program's tuition and fees. That's pretty good. The attached documentation delineates your schedule, optional secondary track choices, and your dormitory assignment. Please remember to submit the attached form if you wish to be eligible for one of the three Reed full-time undergraduate scholarships. We look forward to your attendance. Okay, so I'm guessing maybe she didn't go. I'm there so we go. stupid sometimes. I was telling Lonnie that I got into my college summer program thing, and I was all making plans like, you should come visit me, stay in my dorm room. But she said, Sam, I ship out on June 6th. I was Aww. like, ship out? To where? She said, to basic training. What did you think I was doing all that ROTC stuff for? Mm. I guess she's been planning to join the army right yeah. after high school since she was like 12. And I guess she's really going to do it. So I was like, after graduation, I'm just never going to see you again? She said, let's just have fun while we can. Mm -hmm. Well... Well, here's one of Granddad's books. Joyce, A Complete Understanding. Okay. It's a painting with the face cut out. Oh, this is... Grandfather's painting. Professor Laureate Vingish at U of O, 1956. Okay. The trunk. Scrap of paper. Oh, Oni and Sam, two halves, customized with up to ten letters. That's cute. Other clothes. Book. Accidental savior. Oh, a letter from Grandad attached to the back of it. Dear Terence, thank you for sending along a copy of your newly published book. An author's first published manuscript is a, mon a momentous occasion. I read it this afternoon. I certainly recognized my son in the subject of matter. An author's work is the externalization of that which he holds dear and that which he fears, and in this respect I believe your work was successful. But the lens through which your personal shown was needlessly clouded by genre cliches and implausible dim demistroir science fictional day ex machina. Oh, wow, that's... <laughs> The great authors speak of their life's milieu in clear and honest tones, the lens crystal that refracts their thoughts without distortion. I congratulate you on surviving the great ordeal that is publication, and rest assured that readers of your chosen genre will, le will lap up copies hungrily, but I urge you to shed artifice. You can do better. 
Okay, so that's... Yeah, with your dad as an English professor, that would be hard. Newspaper clipping. Mason's Pharmacy Soda Fountain welcomes Boone County youngsters. Okay, so this might have been, um... Oscar. The cheeks of good fellow high school students were rosy today as each and every last one stepped up to the newly christened soda fountain at Oscar Mason's Pharmacy downtown. Excuse me, following many months of renovations, including a brand new dispenser to mix fuzzy water with any number f of flavored syrups, fuzzy water, fizzy water, <laughs> and a glass-topped ice cream case from which to scoop, scoop, scoop to the heart's delight, Mr. Mason, long a well-loved fixture of Main Street, looked overjoyed to welcome the throng of young people. The first sweet served up to the crowd, uh, to Terry Greenbrier, age eight. Your nephew of Mr. Mason, yeah, so our dad going to Uncle Mason's soda fountain as a youngster. How cute. Okay, so that looks like a hoarder's delight in there, newspaper clippings. And a room there. Well, which room to go into first? The light's on in this one, that's kind of interesting, I think. Oh, here's a folder. Hello? I think that's just the house. Mom's citizenship stuff. Oh, where's our mom from? Who's all married? Hmm. Huh. It's hard to read this. Oh, she's from Canada, that's right. Okay. So she married our dad and became U.S. citizen. It's a bunch of newspapers. Wow. It's like, never throw out a newspaper, ever. Did. What's in here? What is that? Nothing. Okay. Mason's Pharmacy Ledger. It was probably in there or something. I don't know. Ah! Ugh! <laughs> Making a mess of things. Uh... Postcard. That is Willamette Falls. Hey Sam, I'm writing to you from oh Multnomah Falls. Excuse me. Jeez, I don't even know my own state. Uh, I'm here on a stupid class trip, which is stupid because it's March, and I don't know if anyone running this school has been to Oregon, but it's cold and rainy as shit in March. <laughs> Wish you were here. Oh wait, you are here because I'm writing this to you in the gift shop. Oh shit, here you come. Oh, that's funny. Haha. Uh -huh. They tell you to stick with the group on field trips, Katie. There's a reason for that. Lonnie and I snuck off on the side paths at Multnomah Falls and got a little lost. <laughs> okay, a lot lost. Like, for hours. Right before the bus left, we found a trail and came running down the path, soaked and covered in mud, shouting for the bus not to leave. The school called home. Mom and Dad said, you didn't get into trouble like this before you met that Lonnie girl. But I don't think they know, no, about us. The kids at school, though, I'm really afraid that's a whole other story. Stick with the group, Katie. Stick with the group. Yeah, who cares about the kids at school? Whatever. Uh, Mason's Pharmacy changes hands. Under new management, the shoppers of Main Street were surprised today at the announcement that Mason's Pharmacy would change ownership for the first time since it opened ten years ago. Rumors swirled that the sudden sale of the pharmacy was transacted for a song. When asked about speculation that the deal had been signed for as little as one dollar, Mr. Samuel Onstein, Oscar Mason's longtime assistant and now proprietor of Mason's Pharmacy, told the register, The specifics will remain between myself and Mr. Mason. Mr. Mason had taken sick and was unavailable for comment. That's interesting. Hmm. I'm not going to go up there quite yet. I'm going to go over to this other room. What have we got in here? A bathroom? Does this not have running water? A letter? Yolanda DeSato to care of Hector and Marie DeSato. Blah, 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 blah. So, 
Okay, she's sending a letter. Today's Spanish lesson. Fly is Mosca, hubcap is Tapa Cubos, Sunbeam, Rayo de Sol, your love to Amor. Dear Sam, I'm so happy you liked the drawing. It was, I was thinking of us when I drew it. I knew you'd be able to tell. You'd love Mexico, I think probably. <laughs> The nature here is totally different than back home. I keep thinking about algebra and the first mate lost on a mystery oh allegra and the first mate lost on a mystery uh, mysterious island where even the plants are out to get them and then I think of them together out there in the wilderness together and I start thinking of you again. I lie here in bed and I can almost feel you. I've been trying to save it for when we're together again. I haven't done a good job, okay, but I tried. <laughs> Okay, enough about that. Your last letter got to me the day before we start driving back north. We'll be racing this letter home. If I get home first, you can we can read it together. And yes, I'm taking tons of photos. We have to spend so much time. We'll have to spend so much time in the dark room. Oh, they like spending time in the dark room. Okay, what have we got here? X-ray specs button. Some crumpled papers. None of them are important, I guess. Can't read any of them. Pillow. Let's see, Girl Scout, the band formerly known as Club Scout, set list, role model authority means squeeze. Oh, role model. I think that was. Todd's what band lost that? their singer. Oh. Todd said he sucked. Lonnie said he got sick of Todd's shit. And he was complaining about needing a new singer. So Lonnie was like, I can sing. And they were all kind of like, You can? And she was like, Probably, but she's been rehearsing with them for like a week now, and I finally got to see them play in Todd's basement today, and she's actually really amazing. I feel so proud when she's on stage. It's incredible being in awe of someone you love. So everybody knows it's like a temporary situation till she ships out in June, but till then, I'm going to be at every single show. So yeah, so that's... Okay, we don't have the combination for that yet. Here's another tape. Might as well just listen to see... So this is, um... I guess Todd's band. It's not very good. It's not my kind of music. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, it looks like she ordered the heart pendant there, paid cash. And then there's these bells here. Uh, I guess I'll flick. Hmm. Mr. Mason's room. sure if that's, I, well, I guess that's going to be a puzzle, maybe, if we do that in a certain order or something, I don't know. Uh, I think I'll probably end this episode here. Uh, I think next time we might go down this hallway, or into the other room, I'm not sure. I uh, hope you're enjoying the game so far. It's very touching. I'm curious to find out what happened to everybody. I think it's going to be sad. I know it's going to be sad. My friend said it was a sad game. Well, I like sad games, so I like a, a well-told story. It's good. So I will see you in the next episode. Thank you. For